welcome to episode 2 of the weekly series Under the Radar, where I bring to light several topics in the tech world which may have gone unnoticed. First off on our list is a short and straightforward guide on getting your first or second generation Mac Pro to recognize 64GB of RAM. I will inform on how to effectively install and sustain it without issues down the road. I'm bringing this topic up because I have the liberty to experiment with an unusual yet totally stable second generation Mac Pro setup which involves 64GB of RAM. You will need to make sure of these things. You are running Mac OS 10, 10 and above though this may or may not work with macOS Mountain Lion, that your RAM sticks match the original RAM specification for the first and second generation's Mac Pro, the background picture is the most compatible kind for reference, and you would most likely want to have official Apple heatsinks installed on your RAM to avoid the thermal issues presented with the thin heatsinks on unofficial server RAM. Continuing about the heatsinks, you must also make sure that you use either official Apple heatsinks to replace the thin wafer heatsinks of the server RAM, or that you use 667MHz specific Mac Pro heatsinks. The reason being is because DDR2800 seems to have a different notch position which allows the clip to snap in place. While third generation Mac Pro heatsinks can be installed on the original Mac Pro RAM, it is unadvisable. The side notches are the incorrect size, and the left and right notches on the heatsinks would be far too to the left and right, which would cause the heatsink to sit unevenly. This will cause a potential thermal disparity in the RAM stick itself as the heatsinks do not sit evenly, which may lead to potential warping. This is exactly what caused my old RAM stick to fail, so therefore I had to get a new one. The second thing being covered today is relevant to the previous topic. It's on how to install macOS El Capitan on your original Mac Pro in the simplest way possible. Before we continue, I will mention that later on I'm going to do a full video on multiple methods of this installation. The method I'll describe in this video unfortunately requires a Mac which does legitimately support macOS El Capitan to complete this installation. First things first, you grab your Mac which supports up to macOS El Capitan or beyond. However you'd like to do it, there are many ways which this can be done. Simply install macOS El Capitan onto the supported Mac. You may do this as an upgrade from a previous system by doing a clean installation, then following this link below to install macOS El Capitan if you are unable to find it through the App Store or if your machine supports something newer. Next, you will need a FireWire 400, 800, or Thunderbolt cable and the appropriate adapters to proceed with this process. Each cable may be found cheaply on eBay and helps greatly with the tasks that require multiple Macs. You will put your Mac Pro on target disk mode and connect it to your supported Mac. Go ahead and download the trial version of Carbon Copy Cloner. It will allow you to do what's needed. Select your main drive, select your target volume, and hit clone. For best results, use an SSD in your Mac Pro or multiple SSDs in RAID 0 in your Mac Pro. Next, you will need the proper boot.efi files, which I have linked in the description below. You must use Carbon Copy Cloner to clone these files to the proper locations to supersede any instances of rootless. Once these files have finished, you may eject your Mac Pro from your desktop and shut it down. Start your Mac Pro back up, hold the Option key, and you should see your identical copy of your supported Mac's installation on your Mac Pro. And that, my friends, is all I have for today's episode. Be sure to tune into next week's episode of Under the Radar for more great stuff. If you like it, like it. If you dislike it, you know what to do. Subscribe to see more videos just like this. Super Ice Cream Sandwich over and out.